It is 11 o'clock on the morning of September the 8th, 1949. Hundreds of Toronto citizens pause briefly today and give thought to tomorrow. The Lieutenant Governor of Ontario sets in motion a massive machine. Its ponderous thrusts hammer a hymn of progress. Its temple salutes today's foresight. Machines and men move into action. The heartbeat of the city accelerates. Here you can actually see the metropolis grow and expand. See it march forward to new greatness, to increasing stature. The needs of tomorrow are a constant charge upon the wisdom and foresight of today, especially in a city of the magnitude of Toronto. Beneath Toronto's towers of commerce and industry, the Metropolitan Tempo ever increases, ever grows apace. In steel and stone, in brick and mortar, are the tangible tokens of healthy growth. Yesterday's muddy York has come into its heritage as Canada's commercial capital. These great buildings reach toward the sky and shout their story of expansion. Yet on quiet streets, smaller structures speak with even greater eloquence. Tell of a city of homes flinging its boundaries over an ever-widening area. Tell of population doubled and redoubled. These are the people who crowd the streets, who must move from home to work and home again. who visit parks where natural beauty offers contrast to the steel and cement of city life. These are the people who find relaxation within the limits of their city, the people whose enterprise has brought Toronto to its present peak and who will push it ever further on the road of progress. For these people, the date, September the 8th, 1949, is a day to note and remember. On that day, work commenced on a project that truly treads wisely on the today, that is a step on the stairway to tomorrow. A new era in Toronto's life commenced when the Toronto Transportation Commission began work on rapid transit lines for Toronto. On that day, seven years of careful planning ripened into action. The greatest single factor in the growth and vitality of a city is the lifeblood that flows through its traffic arteries, the lifeblood that is people, hundreds of thousands of them, moving from home to factory or office, to busy shopping centers. To seats of learning for the young. to churches where men and women of every faith may worship freely. To sports centers as spectators or players. Record-breaking crowds at the Canadian National Exhibition are a tribute to the role played by the TTC in helping develop this, the greatest annual exhibition in the world. A city bogged down with traffic congestion is a sick city, its lifeblood stagnant, its property values crumbling, its very existence threatened by decentralization. Adequate and efficient traffic and transportation facilities are on the prescription for the life and prosperity of any city. For the mass transportation of its people, Toronto has had since 1921 its municipally owned transportation system. The Toronto Transportation Commission has kept ever in mind its purpose of providing the best possible service at the lowest cost. Newcomers to Toronto may not realize that it was not always so. Before TTC days, for instance, there were two popular pastimes for local passengers, cheating the fare box and cheating the undertaker. Some nimble citizens played both together. 
On the question of cost, remember that in those days, there were nine separate fares collected for transportation services in Toronto. In the 17 square miles of the city's 1891 limits, the Toronto Railway Company collected a fare. But the total area of the city was 34 square miles, 17 of which were served by eight other fare collecting systems. To travel from one point in the city to another cost as high as 15 cents. Today, the fare in Toronto is nearly half what it is in many comparable cities on this continent. For the very reasonable TTC fare, you and your family ride in the best obtainable equipment. Mother, dad, and the youngsters. These are the people who use the TTC as family transportation. Small details like easily opened windows are appreciated by riders. The most modern transit vehicles in the world are at your service 24 hours a day. On new multiple unit streamliners, on trolley coaches and buses, you are taken anywhere in Toronto for just one low fare. This includes free transfers where necessary. The transition from the old inefficient nine fare system to the tightly knit unit of today took place in 1921 when the TTC took over the nine separate systems. The TTC, then as today, represented all those thousands who depend on mass transportation every day of their lives. In the interests of its owner customers, the TTC began the program of expansion that continues today with the development of rapid transit. Toronto has only three directions in which to grow away from Lake Ontario, west, north, and east. To pull these districts together is the task of the TTC. As streetcar tracks and bus routes spanned outward from the lakefront, new communities of suburban Toronto came into being. Kingston Road, Gerrard, the Danforth, North Toronto, Eglinton, St. Clair, Bloor and Jane, thriving with the aid of reliable, low-cost transportation. Today, the total mileage of TTC streetcar, trolley coach, and bus routes would carry you from Quebec City, far west of Winnipeg. If the rolling stock were lined up bumper to bumper, the parade would stretch for more than 15 miles. Caring for the cars and buses in which you ride to work and play is an industry in itself. In the divisional car houses, they are groomed and cleaned before being put into service. Any housewife will tell you that it's a problem to keep the living room tidy with only family and friends to mop it up. The housekeeping job of the TTC is a continual one. The objective, neatness, cleanliness, sparkling and attractive appearance. But cleanliness and neatness, important though they are, rank second to safety and efficiency of operation. The safety fenders are tested regularly to be ready for their life-saving jobs. Brake shoes get special attention to permit the service to be fast as well as safe. Doors have safety catches that must be kept in top condition. Windows receive careful attention to keep them weather tight. Timing is a vital safety factor in the opening and closing of doors. It's ready for the day's run. The tester okays the car. For major overhaul and repair, the rolling stock is called in at regular periods to the general shops. These are the focal center of the TTC's Hillcrest property, 22 acres of it, adjoining the corner of Bathurst Street and Davenport Road.
Every streetcar is brought in for complete overhaul at stated intervals. When its turn comes, every car gets the full treatment at Hillcrest. Straight line production, as in the most modern factory, is the rule at the general shops. These streetcars look a little strange. We don't often see a car traveling sideways. But the transfer table speeds up handling of the cars in the shops and easily slips them into their proper places. From undercarriage to trolley wheel, from back to front, each car is checked, repaired, refurbished, made ready for better operation. It all depends on the point of view. Here's how your everyday means of transportation looks from the bottom up. The accelerator, for instance, feeds the power in a hundred finely graduated steps to give smoother, faster pickup for your modern streamliners. Before the advent of the TTC, the car houses, yards, and repair shops of the former systems were as out of date as the open-end streetcars. But today, efficient maintenance not only means reliable service, but saves hundreds of thousands of dollars annually. Precision and tolerances down to ten thousandths of an inch are called for on the lathes. The wheels themselves are pressed onto their axles under tens of thousands of pounds pressure. The newest models of wheel presses and axle presses are used. Although the days of the horse-drawn car are lost in dusty antiquity, the brawny blacksmith has his job on behalf of modern transportation. Equipment, which once would have languished in the scrap bins, gains new usefulness under the white heat of the welder's torch. Bearing shafts are given added years of life with this unique equipment that sprays metal on the shafts. Every day in Greater Toronto, TTC streetcars, coaches and buses travel a distance five times greater than around the world and serve more than a million passengers. Here at Hillcrest, bodies are reconditioned, rebuilt inside and out to deliver more and more miles of safe and satisfactory service. Any housewife who worries about wear and tear on the Chesterfield should see the work entailed in keeping 40,000 streetcar and bus seats upholstered for good service and good appearance. After the prime requirements of sturdiness, comfort, and safety are cared for, comes the smart appearance for which TTC equipment is renowned. The cars are sanded down, the windows masked before painting. Then the familiar bright TTC red goes on. You never have to look twice to recognize a TTC car. Of course, a good car must have an operator to match. Here's a man who is going to apply for this important job. He must fill out a detailed application form. Now he visits the employment office for an interview with a man whose life is devoted to judging the personalities and aptitudes of other men. A scientific aptitude test screens his ability and inclinations. The interview and the tests are excellent, so he is called the next day, and naturally he's happy to hear he'll be given a chance at the job. Before his training begins, he is given a most thorough medical examination. Top physical condition is essential, for the safety of hundreds depends on him every day. Eyes are among the most important items in his physical equipment, and his check is perfect. Reaction times, driving instincts, 
depth perception, and the other essentials of safe operation are measured accurately by this superhuman machine. It gives would-be streetcar and bus drivers a thorough motor ability test. So now he starts his course of instruction. With other would-be operators, he goes back to school. And he'll continue his training as long as he is with the TTC. For even veteran operators are given refresher courses. The system has its own completely equipped school, where the grounding in fundamentals is intensive. Streetcars and buses that never move are the practice grounds for these keen students. Hour after hour, they work the dummy controls. Stopping, starting, opening doors, throwing switches, acquiring precision and confidence. Not only does the operator know all about the controls and mechanisms, he has had a very thorough instruction in the most important feature of his work, good public relations. He is efficient also in other duties, like searching the car for forgotten articles. A staff is busy at TTC Lost Articles headquarters, sorting over 44,000 articles every year. Yes, the lives of an army of nearly 3,000 uniformed men are devoted to your service. The operator's activities revolve around the divisional office. There they check first on the day's run ahead, then secure their supplies of tickets and transfers, those handy little slips that get you from route to route without extra charge. Change, too, must be carried for the convenience of passengers. After the daily run is over, it's back to the divisional office to make out the daily report. At each of the divisional offices of the system, traffic control is the chief responsibility. Operators and division superintendent are necessary. Even when everything runs smoothly, traffic control is a complex operation. But when trouble strikes, split-second timing and speed, speed, speed are called for. The trouble call from the streetcar operator is shot to the TTC emergency radio dispatcher who flashes instructions to the nearest cruising supervisor who gets on the job fast. A streetcar is off the tracks. Perhaps some obstacle derailed it. Perhaps a piece of scrap metal was dropped accidentally on the tracks. Whatever the cause, it's the TTC's job to get it back into action with as little interruption as possible. That's where two-way radio control works so well. Mobile units equipped with radio telephones are alerted and dispatched to the job by the TTC communications room. The trouble truck rolls. In a matter of minutes, service is restored. Sometimes the police report trouble. The weather has taken its toll. High wind and freezing rain force down a wire. So once more the troubleshooters must roll. To tackle high voltage on the loose, to protect citizens as well as to keep traffic moving. Theirs is a job requiring courage as well as skill, cool-headedness as well as speed, and a fine disregard for the discomforts of wind and weather. It is the exceptional quality of the troubleshooters themselves that gets the job done, quickly, safely, efficiently. For it is their responsibility to ride the storm to keep our transportation lines open.
in snow blankets the city, the last vehicles to bog down in the most impossible storm and the first to roll again are the vehicles of the Toronto transportation system. Behind this record, and behind the record of fewer and fewer service interruptions every year, lies the smooth working efficiency, the hard driving skill of the system's snow fighting forces. And in fairer weather, other men make sure your ride is smooth. TTC rails are welded into one continuous jointless track. Keeping the rails and roadbed in good condition is a never-ending job. Tough and heavy as they are, rails and switches wear out and have to be replaced by new ones. No right-of-way maintenance problems are involved with buses, but these have their special guardians at the TTC Parkdale garage. Regular maintenance care keeps them running smoothly, and they're completely overhauled at regular intervals. When the day comes for the bus to go in for its complete body and motor job, no detail is overlooked. Motors are taken out, torn down, rebuilt. They are steam cleaned by the latest equipment before they are reinstalled. Fine adjustments are made with precision. Proper maintenance and overhaul of buses pays off for you in dividends of safety, comfort, cleanliness. The key to bus safety lies in the tires, which are checked daily to be sure of proper inflation. No tire is continued in service if the slightest defect is detected. It is meticulous care of this kind that enabled the TTC to carry more than five billion passengers without one fatal passenger injury. And of course, the TTC must sell its services in competition with other forms of transportation. A bus that glitters has sales appeal. When your transportation commission constructed the Toronto bus terminal, it carried its operation of grey coach lines a logical step forward and assured our city of its present prominent position as a major highway travel centre of America. Centrally located, the terminal is completely modern Dependable, comfortable, low-cost transportation is provided for thousands every day. Courteous attendants are on the alert to assist travelers. Scores of regular daily trips are scheduled. And as the dispatcher's call rolls out, the comfortable coaches and deluxe streamliners of gray coach lines owned by your TTC glide from the loading platforms to highways east and west, north and south. Gray coaches travel more than a thousand miles of Ontario highways, make connections with other leading lines serving all North America. Gray coach lines operate also the extra fare Hill, Mount Pleasant, High Park and Beach coach routes. By leaving their own motor cars at home, passengers help relieve traffic congestion and enjoy limousine luxury service. Shoppers buses are another feature of Gray Coach Line service. Sightseeing coaches make regular tours. A stranger to Toronto might think it unusual that a streetcar and bus system should operate boats, but this is the case in Toronto. Many thousands of her citizens make regular trips to and from the islands off Toronto's waterfront. The TTC operates the island ferries, and your regular streetcar ticket is your admission card to a miniature cruise. On rails, on rubber, and on water, the Toronto Transportation Commission moves more people, more efficiently, more rapidly, year after year.
TTC riders start early in life, for parents know that the kiddies can ride in safety even when they are alone. From the open-end streetcar days to the newest multiple-unit high-speed cars required many steps up the stairway to tomorrow. Now, as another far-sighted logical step on the same stairway, as part of Toronto's transit to tomorrow, the TTC is hard at work to take traffic underground to even more people, more efficiently, more rapidly. With a bow to the sidewalk experts who keep a loving eye on progress and give freely of their time and advice as they supervise the men at work, the TTC rapid transit plans are underway. At long last, planning engineers and transit engineers have been given the go-ahead. They have joined forces to lift Toronto out of a morass of traffic congestion. The basic principle of their plan is separation of motor vehicle traffic and rail traffic. The city's planning engineers push forward with more and wider motor thoroughfares, and the transit engineers bring within early realization high-speed subways and off-the-street rapid transit rights of way healthy arteries to carry the lifeblood of traffic, of people, to all sections of the city. A famous mayor of New York gave testimony to rapid transit in these words. New York did not build the subways, the subways built New York. The passengers have paid the whole cost of buying, extending, maintaining, and operating Toronto's municipally owned transit system. Not one dollar of taxes has ever been collected from Toronto taxpayers to help finance the TTC. In fact, the TTC itself pays full taxes to the city. Yet every business, every property, and every person in Toronto benefits from the progress and prosperity that modern transit service brings to a city. With its more than 6,000 loyal and sincere employees, with its traditionally high standards of efficiency and progress, and with a continuance of the public goodwill and support which have been its very foundation, Toronto's transit system faces the future with great confidence. It is a confidence that reflects the confidence of the city and its institutions. It was no mere desire for poetic alliteration that inscribed the words industry, intelligence, integrity on Toronto's coat of arms. These are meaningful words that have inspired more than a hundred years of solid progress, now being topped by more spectacular events. And transit to tomorrow means rapid transit for the greater Toronto of which the citizens of tomorrow will be proud. <laughs> <laughs>